And now Tony, Tony Brink from uh, Noldi Folk Center is our CTO and also in charge of the test center for uh, for small wind turbines that we have here. Uh, yeah, thank you and uh, again welcome. Uh, first of all, uh, I'll try to take uh, take it to uh, seen from a small wind perspective mostly, and, and not look at, at wind farms at all because I think it's a, it's a totally different pictures when we're talking about wind farms. Uh, and talking about individual uh, wind turbines, uh, but um, and and all of the test site and all about North Falls and I'll try to to keep for tomorrow. So uh, now we'll only see it from a social exception point. And uh, but of course we are here in the, in the northwest part of Denmark. You have all the, all uh, noticed that. So let's continue uh, to look at the obstacles and. And and to look at these obstacles, I haven't looked at into what what is 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 planning needed. Or we all know that we have to protect wildlife and our environment. So I'm not questioning these two uh, parameters at all. Uh, but I try to see it in, from from a small wind perspective, and and try to look upon it from a sailor and a buyer's point of view uh, only, and and see what kind of challenges they actually. Uh, they are up against because at the end they are in the same boat. If 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 uh, the manufacturers see have more and more challenges, the product will become more and more expensive, and they have less and less customers, and uh, so you end up in vicious circles with with too much of regulation or or inappropriate regulation. Uh, then, uh, of course, planning is a, uh, is a big part of, of, of their daily life. Uh, and uh, waiting time within the municipalities here in Denmark is, is unacceptable that small wind manufacturers have, or customers had to wait until two years. If they're lucky, if they get it through in, in half a year. The average is roughly, as we hear from the manufacturers, is around a year. And, uh, and then they're... Then they're they're lucky. Of course, it varies from municipality to municipality, and 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 so they see some kind of uh, lack of uh, of knowledge within the municipalities. Uh, they are not even uh, dressed properly to to handle small wind. Uh, so no wonder they can't handle big wind, uh, and and have all these challenges with with the uh, with the public interests. Uh, but but the municipalities have. Internally, a, a goal with these small wind turbines that for, for decades they have prevented the municipality. The municipality in Denmark want to achieve the goal from the government to put up more onshore wind. That's the main goal that, uh, that suppresses the, the municipalities from the government. And, uh, and that leaves very little room for small wind because they're in the same boat regarding, regarding noise requirements or noise regulation. So if you put up a small wind turbine, that can actually prevent an entire wind farm to put up because the, the total noise emission from, from that area will be increased and then you cannot put up a wind farm. So it's better from the municipality's point of view to not allow these small wind turbines because they cause disturbance. In, in their planning, and and they, they they have enough problems with fulfilling their government's goal on on onshore wind. Uh, then the 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 customers, of course, they're tired of this twenty meter rules we have that you are allowed to to uh, only to place the, the the small wind turbines twenty meters from your properties. Uh, and uh, then we have had some cases where the municipalities where they don't treat uh, manufacturers yeah. equally by the law that they have uh, local rules that if certain areas they don't want two bladed wind turbines they don't want, they only want a, a three bladed fast runner they don't want a disturbance in the landscape picture but again it's a local uh, decision in in a single or, or two municipalities that takes us the decision so that, but the, of course the manufacturers they see see that they are, especially if you are a two-braid manufacturer, then they are being uh, left out. Uh, then you can say uh, the public opinion. I, I would say they are they're, they're split in two groups. You have a, a group of, of people that really want to be self-independent, and, and that, that group is growing. Uh, first of all, uh, due to that, uh, a lot of these uh, people who are front runners in renewable 
energy is also the same same families that very fast uh, got on board in, in, in PV, in photovoltaic, and invested in uh, in systems that were allowed to be net metering, yearly net metering. And they, they felt, uh, they feel uh, that they have been left behind because this, uh, they were promised 20 years uh, with, with this system, with these uh, rules. And now they had a rollback on these rules. So today they, they want to be energy independent. So they also move forward on wind. And uh, so they need wind and cannot handle it. So on PV alone. And then, of course, uh, this group is also helped by the latest decision from our government that we have to prepare, or all of Europe have to prepare more for war. So we have been told to prep and be ready for to live for three days without water. Uh, totally unknown figure for for all young people because we have been uh, relying on our grid and our water supply for for decades and without any kind of interruption. So the, a lot of the water supplies luckily have a battery backup, but a, a certain water reservoirs don't have. Uh, so. That's also a factor that that tells that uh, maybe I should get in uh, into to to be an independent. Then the second group, and uh, and and I also believe that a lot of uh, manufacturers see the municipalities at the same with the same opinion. David also just touched it barely that uh, the attitude within the municipality: why should we have all these small wind turbines? We can just have one big. And uh, and uh, they're just disturbing the landscape, and uh, small wind is just making electricity more expensive for, uh, especially when you have initiative programs where you have a higher feed-in tariff that's even above the electricity price. So in, in that period where we had these kind of a, of agreement, then people are really asking why should we have this because it makes electricity more expensive for all of us. Uh, uh, and then, uh, of course, the manufacturers. They, uh, they they see it from a, a little different perspective with the with the changes in approval processes and uh, local and uh, national legislation more that now there is a new design standard and and we have our system is changing into using more standard into our legislation uh, if you go back years then our we had one side that was our legislation and then you had some design standard that was a help. For building a wind turbine today, these design standards are built into our legislation. So this way around, it's actually more or less the industry writing the, the legislation. Uh, but that also means that they are often uh, updated, and every time there is an update, it means extra cost for for manufacturers. Uh, Currently, uh, Brent, uh, Brent uh, Thomas will tell us about what the status is on our latest uh, small wind standard update. Uh, but still, even we are quite advanced with these standards. Then, as an example, the electrical standard is not included in 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 the small wind uh, design standard. So, even that you have a new standard and you approve your turbine towards that standard, you still have to go through a national uh, approval process to be allowed to grid connect in in the individual countries. E even all over Europe, where we have Senelec, which is a, a central organ that it should actually uh, unify all these rules. But uh, it's still a national body that takes care of rich connections all over Europe. So if you apply for uh, for uh, uh, electrical approval, you get it for Denmark only. And uh, of course, all these things, they, uh, they create a greater risk and financial risk and waiting time. Planning. Uh, yeah, obstacles for new owners of wind turbines. It, it is mostly this uh, this uh, bad 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 stories being told uh, because, and then uh, the disadvantage of of having a lot of information on the internet is that people are very many people are, are misinformed. Because they can't sort out what what the, what's actually the the valid information, they they run along with with some old uh, legislation and uh, try to put up uh, or spend the family fortune on uh, on on some old legislation and find out now I bought something that I can't quite connect or whatever and money is wasted and and another bad story. Uh, 
And then, as, as mentioned earlier, this whenever you have the lab installation, we our PV uh, uh, set up with with yearly net metering is actually one of the only cases where we have had legislation where we rolled back legislation and even went beyond. Not only we draw a line in the sand, and now we say, and then we say that from from this date and onwards, it's a new set of rules. But regarding uh, PV, they rolled it back and and even went. Uh, Beyond what they promised, uh, or behind what they promised, so, and, and that's really uh, that. That really gives uh, scares a lot of people. When will they do that again? Uh, yeah, you, you you got a, a turbine that has a high feed, promised a high feed in tariff for twenty years. Uh, yeah, now it's ten years, and uh, will it disappear tomorrow? You you're not certain of your investment, so that's also a concern from the manufacturer's point that. Uh, they're up against that when they are they want to sell uh, wind turbines. Yeah, then I just took this one. Uh, I used it in another presentation because that more or less sums up what also the other two, uh, Danny, uh, David, and Anka went through. So there was, I thought there was no reason for mentioning or showing the, the triangle again and all the same stuff with a lot of source like that, and uh, that we don't have to to tell the same story all of us, but. This is more or less what sums up uh, what we have to come through when we discuss it afterwards. Uh, for 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 when in general, and uh, when we often discuss with, with our colleagues, especially from the US, then we we come from from two sides of of, of wind industry. Where in Denmark we come from all our turbines being in the distribution network, and only when we went offshore we had wind turbines in the transmission network. Whereas America started out with big wind parks that were all connected to the transition network. And now they want to connect uh, to deploy more wind into the distribution network. So they, they are, they're, they're going towards single turbines where we are only concerned on going towards uh, wind farms. Uh, yeah, I think that was more or less what I would uh, give us input to our later discussion on uh, social acceptance. Then you can say uh, some of our own uh, popular uh, pictures from Yeah, yeah. No, no, no reason to say anymore. No, okay. So thanks, Tony. Uh, there is actually a question in the chat, yeah. so don't run away. Uh, yeah, the main IEC certification to small wind turbines are validated in Denmark and USA, right? America have their own. So, uh, <laughs> Luis, uh, you want to elaborate on the question, maybe, or? But they are very much alike. Any other question? Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, my question is about the the certification. So the most frequent place to certificate right now is USA and Denmark. Uh, no. Uh, we we also use uh, IEC sixty one four hundred dash two for small wind, and okay. uh, that's also the one that that uh, then then America they rewrite it because they also include the electrical standards in their standard. So uh, see from my perspective, they are they're more united in what they do and than we do in Europe. Oh, they have okay. one standard that because includes the uh, the electrical uh, standards he... as well. Because in Brazil we don't have yet. No, uh, many countries don't have. A, yeah, a lot of countries don't require. Uh, I think less than five percent of the world countries in the world requires and requires certification, and that's also uh, uh, challenging for for the products because uh, when when uh, when the manufacturers. They meet the customer. A lot of their customers they can't understand why a wind turbine, a small wind turbine, is so expensive. Uh, but the price is set out from 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 lifetime expectancy, and and then uh, if you want to make it cheap, it'll last two years, and if you want to make it uh, last twenty years, it's it's costly. 
and, and the customers they can't understand why it's so costly. So, but I think maybe we'll like you. Okay, okay. Um, uh, so I, I'm, I'm a, a member of Notebook Center. We could speak or, or uh, schedule a, a meeting to speak about that. Sure. Maybe. Yeah. No problems. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is there any more, uh, any other question? Yeah, actually, I have uh, just a comment, not uh, a question. But the right of calculation in your presentation, that I think that you paid the same presentation for the situation in Italy is exactly the same. Yeah. All the difficulties, trouble installing, permitting, mm -hmm. except that in Italy, like in Brazil, there is no ob uh, obligation for the certification, which could seem good from one side, but it not turns good in practical. You've done a lot of China bad turbines coming, then you stole wherever you want, mm -hmm. and then um, many of them they don't, they don't work. And so the main, small wind uh, not fair becomes uh, not accepted by the pollution groups. Yeah, yeah, and it is a challenge also when we try to speak up for certifying turbines. But the last uh, survey we made about that yeah. actually showed that it was certified turbine that failed. And, and that doesn't actually help the case. But the other side of that point is also that the only one that reports the incident is the companies that has a, 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 a quality insurance system and, and also report the failures. And, and all the bamboo companies, they, they don't tell them about their failures. No. So that, that side of the coin is not, is not visible. And it's unequal among you know, different companies, so it makes it difficult for a producer to export a turbine because if you're a producer and export it in Germany, Denmark, has to comply with certification, it costs a lot of money. Yeah. In the opposite, uh, if uh, you import the Chinese turbine in Europe, I mean, at least in Italy, or in South yeah. countries, it doesn't cost one penny. No, no, and you spot it right away because here in Denmark we have a saying that if you see a Chinese manufacturer that put a CE stamp on his product. Yeah, but it's, no, no, but yeah, I know, but, but that just tells uh, for us that it's Chinese export because you cannot put a CE marking only within Europe. So if a Chinese manufacturer put a CE marking on its product, you cannot do that. It has to be the European dealer that does that. <laughs> Any other question? Doesn't look like. Hey, thank you, Tony. Uh